This is Lakshmi, 60 year old woman, settled in the United States. She is overweight, had a major abdominal surgery one month back. It's her youngest sister's wedding. She is not well, but there is no way she's going to miss it. She takes a flight to India. Being an avid reader, she spends most of the time sitting and reading a book during her flight. By the time she reaches India, she has pain and swelling in her left leg. She ignores the pain and swelling, thinking it might be just due to the travel. She takes a rest and she did not want to bother others because it was the wedding atmosphere over there. But next day morning, she wakes up breathless and she starts coughing and she has pink frothy sputum. What do you think? happened to Lakshmi. Most probably she had pulmonary embolism following deep venous thrombosis. She had all the risk factors for deep venous thrombosis including she was overweight, she had a recent major abdominal surgery and there was prolonged immobilization of the legs. Due to all these risk factors probably there was a clot that was formed in the deep veins of her left leg which resulted in the pain and swelling of the leg and probably this clot got dislodged. It entered the heart and from there it went into the lungs and caused pulmonary embolism. So today we will be looking into the drug that is used to treat pulmonary embolism that is heparin. Heparin is a straight chain mucopolysaccharide with strong electronegative charge. Being highly polar, this drug can be given only parenterally. It is metabolized by heparinase in the liver and excreted in the urine. The source of heparin is ox lung and pig intestinal mucosa. To understand the mechanism of action, let's refresh our physiology a bit. Let's look into the coagulation casket. Firstly, the intrinsic pathway. It is called intrinsic pathway because all the factors that are needed for this pathway are present in the plasma itself. It starts off with activation of factor 12 which in turn activates factor 11. Activated factor 11 activates factor 9 then extrinsic pathway. Extrinsic pathway is called so because it needs Tissue factor from outside. Tissue factor activates factor 7. From here on, both extrinsic as well as the intrinsic pathway have a common pathway that is activated factor 7 and activated factor 9 activates factor 10A. Factor 10A activates prothrombin to thrombin, thrombin activates fibrinogen to fibrin and fibrin with the help of factor 13 forms a stable clot. The mechanism of action of heparin. This is the unfractioned heparin with the unique pentasaccharide sequence. With the help of this pentasaccharide sequence it attaches to antithrombin and thus it produces a conformational change of the active site of antithrombin. Thus Antithrombin 3 is activated. Activated antithrombin 3 binds to factor 10A and inhibits it. Please note, to inhibit factor 10A, antithrombin 3 just needs a conformational change of the active site. Whereas, to inhibit factor 2A, antithrombin not only needs a conformational change but heparin has to bridge over both antithrombin and factor 2A together. That's why only unfractioned long molecules of heparin can inhibit factor 2A, whereas smaller low molecular weight heparin can inhibit only factor 10A because these low molecular weight heparin cannot bridge antithrombin and factor 2A together. Thus, heparin acts by inhibiting both factor 2 as well as factor 10 indirectly. 
because it doesn't directly inhibit factor 2 and factor 10 it inhibits factor 2 and factor 10 by indirectly activating antithrombin 3 the uses of heparin heparin is most commonly used in the management of deep venous thrombosis and pulmonary embolism then in the management of unstable myocardial infarction and in coronary angioplasty dosage it can be given as an IV bolus or continuous infusion or even subcutaneous it's not given intramuscularly because of the risk of hematoma formation in the muscles heparin is monitored by APTT the APTT has to be two to three times the normal to attain the therapeutic level the adverse effects of heparin the most common adverse effect is bleeding which is the extension of its therapeutic action it can cause thrombocytopenia very rarely it can cause heparin induced thrombocytopenia which is an immune mediated reaction osteoporosis alopecia and hyperkalemia are some of the side effects of heparin the antidote to heparin is protamin sulfate which is obtained from the sperm of salmon protamin sulfate is a strongly basic molecule and it neutralizes heparin which is an acid 1 is to 1 the contraindications to heparin include bleeding disorders heparin induced thrombocytopenia which is abbreviated as HIT hypertension large cancers ocular surgery neurosurgery and lumbar puncture to summarize heparin is a highly polar parenteral anticoagulant it acts indirectly by inhibiting factor 2 and factor 10 it is used in the management of deep venous thrombosis myocardial infarction and in coronary angioplasty the most common adverse effects are bleeding alopecia hyperkalemia and osteoporosis and the antidote to heparin is protamin sulfate